Hey guys, it's Adam from Mr. Pixel and welcome back. Now, being somebody who often shares his experiences and his feelings online, I'm very often contacted by fellow artists thanking me for my openness, opening up about topics that they might have been a bit too self-conscious to open up about themselves. And although I'm probably projecting my own interpretations of their messages to me, and of course that interpretation is often subject to how written words can be misinterpreted, I can't help but to feel a bit of relief in their tone. Relief in the fact that I'm speaking on behalf of the minority, the underdog. In a way, I'm praised for having the, quote, courage for opening up about topics that a lot of us might feel a bit of shame for. The shame of not being as competent or as talented as others. Shame for struggling to grasp artistic concepts that other might seem to breeze over easily. Ironically, it's that element in our personalities that I relate to most in others. The fact that I too spent most of my life feeling that I was the underdog. I felt that everyone else had no problem fitting in, fulfilling their duties, when I seemed to struggle with it. School was in great part a real struggle for me, for a multitude of reasons. When I first started doing these art talks, more and more people started reaching out to me to express their similar experiences, their similar feelings. And when I started my art mentorship back in 2015, and I got a chance to get to know artists from every corner of the planet, and again, so many of them would share their stories of struggles and insecurity with me. To this day, when I get online with one of my students and ask, how did your week go? My student will rub their forehead, let out a sigh and say, shit, I had a shit week and it was a real struggle getting my painting to work. And more often than not, that feeling kicked in when they felt that they were working on an assignment that had a little bit more at stake, something a little bit more, quote, serious. It's funny too. I've never had anybody say, it's been a shit week with a smile on their face. I can see that they're being authentic. There's some serious stress behind those words. What they feel is their, quote, failure isn't only a failure of finishing a good painting. It's a personal failure that's exposing a weakness in them, an incompetence, and the idea that somebody like me is witnessing this weakness of theirs is humiliating and debilitating and stressful. And from a teacher's perspective, it's always refreshing to see the color flood back into their faces when I reply, yay, torment, suffering, love it, live for drama. Seeing me not shame them or judge them for their screw up makes them realize that their deep fear of theirs is probably only felt by them and that maybe the world isn't as sensitive as they are, not to their stuff. It's also showing them that I'm familiar with, with fear in general, that I'm tempered in quote, human suffering. So cool. I'm not the only loser, failure, idiot, moron you've had to deal with. Somehow, my experience with screw-ups is comforting. And after four decades on this planet, I'm still sitting here scratching my head, wondering why so many of us still believe this myth that we, quote, losers make up the minority. Honestly, after decades of working professionally and a good number of years since I started teaching, both in the school system and my private mentorship, that it's actually the great majority of us that feel this way, that believe that we're the anomalies in this sea of brilliant, amazing artists. And here's the irony of me, myself, my particular position as a teacher and a YouTuber. People hear me share these words of wisdom and comfort. They see me teach students of every skill level and think, wow, he's got it all figured out. He's reached that point in his career that we're all reaching for. But the true reality is that the only value that I feel my words bring you is in the fact that they're coming from a place of authenticity, that I feel like I'm legit when I share these struggles with you. They're coming from somebody who also spent most of his life feeling like a screw up, a guy raised by a mother who blinded him with praise, made him feel like he had hope for a promising future. But that was just ignorant. <laughs> and that was just a loving mom. And I was hopeless. 
I don't make these videos to bring you the answers you seek, at least not in the quote, I'm the best, listen to me sense of the word, but rather in the, that shitty opinion of yours that you have of yourself is wrong. And I know from experience, I realized after so many years of being emotionally abusive to myself, that my failures were actually completely normal. The problem with society, unfortunately, is that we're just too cowardly to admit that we're not perfect. But nobody's perfect, especially us artists. I mean, we're extremely vulnerable and insecure and afraid. We're afraid to choose the wrong path. We're afraid we're not good enough. We're afraid that we're not focused enough or we're not adaptable enough. I mean, the number of ways that we negatively judge ourselves is mind numbing. How can we even function under that emotional weight? I'd say that one of our crowning achievements as artists in this vast art world is in our ability to remain creatively, emotionally, and physically capable of persevering and producing under the weight of such guilt and shame. But here's the thing. What I'm proud of is in the fact that over these decades, I've managed to find the courage to break free from the pack and allow myself to be vulnerable publicly with you. I feel my great accomplishment in all of these videos is in giving myself the permission to suck publicly. <laughs> That's hard. That's why artists like Borodante and Ahmed al Duri and Cynics and Charles Bernard and Darkin and Bobby Chu empower me so much when I listen to them. They're just so human and relatable and real. Understand that every artist that you love and admire aren't even remotely more talented or focused than you. And so long as you keep telling yourself that, you'll keep believing it. And you're wrong. And so long as you think that you're the minority, you're going to stay silent about it. You'll hide your shame. I know. That's what I did for years. I hid my shame for over 40 years. And the longer I did that, the more alone I felt. The more of a quote, lost cause i felt like i watched my friends and colleagues move forward into successful careers and i was left watching that boat float away from the shoreline and i was so busy watching that boat sailing away into the sunset that i never even bothered to look back and see that huge crowd standing right by my side i want you to understand something while you're sitting in your room or on your couch or riding your bike home alone at night, or having a drink on your balcony, feeling like a lost cause. Know that I'm sitting there right by your side. We all are. And know that just like I'm doing right now, know that when and if you ever do decide to open up and be candid about your feelings, about your work, about yourself, about your abilities, that you will be greeted by a million smiling faces from fellow artists thanking you for having the courage to say what they were too afraid to. I want to leave you with this today. Know that the very fact that you're an artist in the first place means that you were born brilliant. You're independently motivated and independently discouraged. You're unique and rare and precious. You're needed and loved and important. And you're not alone. You never have been. And you never will be. The only thing keeping you from realizing that is your fear that you don't belong. But rest assured, you do. And with that said, I love you all with all my heart. And happy painting. Take care.